All right, top billing, here we go. Here's a bombshell report by your man Todd McShay this morning in regards to the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. And guess what? A player that your boy has been touting as the potential number one overall draft pick since he was in high school may actually end up being the number one draft pick. If you haven't already, make sure you go and check out my Trayvon Walker film study. I break down how he was on my big bros team when he was a, I believe, a sophomore in high school for a Georgia All-Star Showcase team. And uh, yeah, I've known about that kid since then. The first time I ever saw him, I was like, that, my friend, is a number one overall pick. And covering him at the University of Georgia, I've stood by that. And now look. Todd McShay says, let's start off with a big one. All of the intel I've gathered points to Georgia edge rusher, not Michigan defensive end, Aiden Hutchinson, as the number one overall pick for the Jaguars. Wow. So this goes to a think like a GM type thing, right? You have a guy with Aiden Hutchinson who has a, a nice year of production, a very nice year of production, a very now listen. This is something I don't like right here. We'll go down here if you take a uh, if you take a description of Aiden Hutchinson. They always have to do that bullshit, right? And they're talking about Hutchinson being technically efficient off the edge, relentless, and all that. And then you go to Trayvon Walker, and of course they say length, speed, explosion, strength, which is all correct, right? But Aiden Hutchinson is a damn good athlete too. And Trayvon Walker is very relentless in his pursuit. Like, I don't understand these labels. I cannot absolutely stand them. But back to the matter at hand here. That man says that the belief around the league is Jacksonville prefers the upside and traits of Walker over the proven production motor and leadership that Hutchinson brings to the table. And it is nearly a lock that one of them will come off the board first. Man. So think like a GM out there. If you're a GM, if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars GM, who is that? Uh, Trent Trent Balky, I believe. If you're if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars GM, would you take Trayvon Walker over Aiden Hutchinson? Now I did something on both of them. Make sure you check out my Aiden Hutchinson drawing from from the past right there. A lot of people were being goofy about his game against Georgia when I thought that he had a much better game than people gave him credit for. And if you actually have a scout's eye and you understand the game of football, you understand scenarios that if someone is getting held, more than likely they're doing a damn good job, right? You can go on several occasions. That man got held on his way to having some sacks against Georgia. If he comes away with a couple of sacks, nobody is saying anything, right? So you have to point that type of stuff out in film study. If you've been around legitimate film study, these type of things get pointed out. Now, a lot of people will go against Trayvon Walker and saying that he has not had elite production. These people are draft nerds. I can't stand nerds, period, but draft nerds are even worse than regular nerds. These people don't watch college football. They watch a couple of games, and then they do the little sheeple thing. Listen, I did some Jermaine Johnson film study, and I pointed out how Jermaine Johnson transferred from the University of Georgia to get out of that deep rotation that they were in, and look what happened for him. He's going to be a top 10 pick as well. when Nobody really even knew who the hell Jermaine Johnson was before he transferred on a greater scale. Think about that. I believe he had more sacks in one season at FSU than he had his entire time at Georgia. And don't give me this bullshit about, oh, it's the ACC and all that casual fan shit. Go against the individuals or go by the individual tackles faced. You can make an argument that he faced even better tackles in the ACC individually in that one season than he did over a great stretch of the time that he was at Georgia, uh, obviously outside of Alabama's tackles. Some of the better teams, even like a team like Florida, didn't have any elite tackles. Where's Auburn's elite tackles and all this? So don't give me that bullshit. That's why I employ you guys to come here and talk real football head shit. That's the real football head shit that I talk about with the people in the business that I get down with. Pause. So think about it in that manner but beyond that there if Trayvon Walker was on a team like a Michigan where you're not heavily rotated you don't think Trayvon Walker could get you double digit sacks and then he's going to be a monster against the run and he's playing up and down to get tar string from a perhaps a, a, a two technique if you want him to right all the way out to a damn wide nine that's unheard of
right? This kid has crazy athleticism. There's no doubt about that. But even with that being said, I love Aiden Hutchinson as well. I think he's going to be a very good player, and you can make a, a great case for him being the number one overall pick as well, which I said previously too. So I actually thought Trayvon Walker was going to come back one year and he would be in next year's draft with Will Anderson and, and, and Jalen Carter and these guys like that. So he kind of surprised me coming out of this draft. But I still think even with this draft, this draft's probably a little better for him because there's no franchise quarterback in this draft. So him going number one overall makes sense, especially with Jaguars, the Jaguars having to pick and already having Trevor Lawrence. So let me know what you – guys think about that that's bombshell right there and like you see right here six sacks and 29 pressures they're trying to you know doing the thing right there because Aiden Hutchins has 64 pressures but hey Aiden Hutchins is not rotating with about seven or eight legitimate potential high draft picks on his team I can go beyond that. They lost all those guys. And at one particular point in time during the season, they had Adam Anderson there as well, who was an edge player. So when Trayvon Walker moonlights that edge, that was another player that was on the edge that he had to get through as well. So I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I love this type of stuff right here. This is a good success story, and especially one because I've known this kid uh, for a long ass time, man, and he is a monster, and I think he will prove that. Him with the Josh Allen, the defensive, the the defensive edge presence, that Josh Allen, that's a that's that's a motherfucker right there, boy. Aiden Hutchinson with Josh Allen too. So let me know who you got, Trayvon Walker or Aiden Hutchinson. All right, peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.